Hello everyone and welcome to the D Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty YouTube channel. So welcome. I am usually joined by my black Labrador Marjorie. However, she is laying on the floor over there relaxing. We have had a very uh, eventful few weeks has been eventful over these past few weeks <laughs> and she's tired I'm tired we're all tired and so she's taking a relaxing day I am as well I'm able to sit down and record this episode for you guys which is great <laughs> I've missed you so it has been a while and I have a lot to talk about so let me get into the crafty content to share with you and then I can chat about what's been going on towards the end. So I have I have quite a few projects in progress and I'm really quite sad that I have not made more progress on my sweaters. I have two sweaters on the needles. One of them is a color work sweater. I didn't even grab it to sit down and record this podcast. I haven't touched it and I really need to. The other sweater that I'm working on is the Campside Cardigan by Alicia Plummer. And I'm knitting this out of some hand spun yarn. This is some Coopworth hand spun. Uh, where's the sleeve? There it is. <laughs> yarn. Uh, I believe this is where I was the last time I showed this to you. I have one sleeve finished. I have the body finished and I still need to knit the other sleeve as well as the uh, neck band, button band, collar, which is all knit together. <laughs> uh, yes, I have not been working on this and I can tell you the reason I haven't is because so I'm participating in the summer stash camp. <laughs> over in the Grace and Wool Ravelry group. And whips are not allowed in the, I almost call it a competition, <laughs> in the knit along. There are three bunks and we are earning points and my competitive side has come out in, in a good way. Like I really just wanna earn a whole bunch of points for my team and and it's good fun, but whips don't count. <laughs> so I haven't been working on my whips, my projects that I started before the knit along, before June 1st. Uh, so I haven't really worked on this, but I should because I made all these goals and I have all these aspirations and I just should. But I thought I would go ahead and make it known that I haven't done anything with this. And now that I'm touching it and feeling it, I really want to, <laughs> which is good. Um, I also, maybe I mentioned this before, but I did finish this hat that I was working on before. I still have some strings hanging because I plan on, um, sewing on my label. This is D Heart Knits. And so I left those ends on there, but I did finish this hat. So it has some cable work and some bobbles. And I love the color and the, the red couch is kind of messing with it because this is like a rust color, but it's beautiful and I, it fits so well and I love it. So I did, work on another hat uh, because this is for the Give Thanks hat collection this fall and it's a hat collection so it has more than one hat in it. <laughs> so I did finish the first pattern and then I also finished the second one and so this hat is more of a beanie. So it has the these beautiful cables and some ribbing so it's very stretchy which means it also condenses down and it fits like a beanie so yeah 
it's pretty nice and crooked. <laughs> oh my gosh, what am I doing? Okay. There we go. Oh, jeez. I blame my glasses. Hats just... When I look in the mirror and I have my glasses on, it's just that little bit there, and then it, it just doesn't look right. So I took my glasses off. <laughs> um, yeah, so it fits like a beanie, and it's uh, it's just nice and simple and classic, and I really like it. So yeah, I finished the second hat design to go with the collection, and so... I shall be starting the third hat soon, and that's um, really good. <laughs> so yeah, the Give Thanks hat collection is going to be released, uh, I'm shooting for September this year. Uh, that way it can be released earlier in the fall season and give folks a chance to knit hats before it gets really cold uh, and also before the um, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa uh, season. And I'm sure I've missed a few holidays in there um, that I've forgotten about, so I apologize about that. Uh, but before we get into the um, really popular gift knitting season uh, time of year. So my progress on that and um, I mentioned that I've been really into this summer stash camp which I'm also double counting stuff for stash dash uh, and for stash dash hosted by the knit girls in the knit girls Ravelry group uh, whips do count over there <laughs> so I did finish Something that was a whip, I thought. See, this is the problem with taking a big break and not taking notes. Anyway, uh, so I did finish a pair of socks for my husband and a baby blanket, and those were my projects for June. Um, so I knit some socks for my husband that are red and green and brown, and, and they're actually quite festive. And, and I knit a baby blanket out of uh, some worsted weight yarn. I actually have it here to show you. So, <laughs> I just whipped up a baby blanket in like a week, which is ridiculous. <laughs> I know. So this is a brioche baby blanket and I will link the pattern down below in the description box if you're interested. Um, I did modify the pattern because uh, this is, I use two self-striping yarns, uh, one for each side of the blanket, and the pattern has you um, change colors between the skeins. And so since I didn't need to force a color change because I was using self-striping yarn, I did modify the pattern just a little bit. Uh, I did also change the stitch count because I used worsted weight yarn instead of um, sport weight or DK weight that the pattern calls for. So I did make some changes, but I did follow that pattern for the bulk of the idea. <laughs> so, uh, But yeah, it's just a nice big brioche blanket. I used Lion brand, what is this yarn called? Cupcake. And this side is Robin Egg. It's purple, green, and yellow. I thought I had some blue in there. I guess not. The blue's on the other side. <laughs> This is green. On the screen right now, it looks like a sky blue. So I have no idea what's going on with my colors. I'm going to have to look into that. 
And then this side is balloons. So yellow, this bright pink that's really gorgeous, uh, like fuchsia, green, blue, purple, uh, and then yellow again on the end. But yeah, it's just super cool. <sighs> so I used up two, almost the two full skeins of Lion Brand Cupcake yarn. So this got me quite a few meters for Stash Dash, which is nice. So speaking of Lion Brand Cupcake yarn, <laughs> I did order some more. I know. Uh, so my phone has been dinging with notifications from Joann's of sales and coupons and, and free, uh, free delivery. And so I've been doing a uh, curbside pickup. Oh, is my co-host going to join me? Hello. Would you like to come up here and join me? Come on. Marjorie, come. Come say hi to our viewers. Come on. Oh, good. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, yes. You have to say hi to your viewers. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> There we go. That's a good shot. Were you able to see yourself? <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is Marjorie. Oh, Marjorie has been doing so well. Yes, you have. Do you like that we're home all the time now? Hmm. I don't know how to take that expression. <laughs> Anyway, speaking of Lion Brand Cupcake Yarn, I ordered more. There were good sales and coupons, and I just I just couldn't resist myself. So instead of going for um, pink colors, pink and purple colors, I decided to go for like blue and green kind of colors. And so this one is Forest Path with blues and greens. And it does have a nice um, sample here of what the stripes should look like. And then this one is Sand Castle. And I've been looking at this one for a while because I just love that, um, that tan with the blue and the green. I just, oh. I really love it. So yeah, I don't know. I don't, there's part of me that wants to do another <laughs> brioche blanket just because I think they look really awesome, but I would also like to try different patterns. So I think I'm going to try something else. So I don't just have a whole bunch of brioche blankets. I could have other options as well. So that's the idea for these is more baby blankets. It's it's acrylic yarn and it's, you know, something you can throw in the washer and dryer and for something that a baby is going to be using, I think that's really important to to think about, especially if you don't know who the blanket is going to and and what their washing machine situation is. So um and then I did make a little bit of progress on the crochet blanket. So I am crocheting this color block quilts pattern thing. Wow, I am at a total loss for words. Uh, but I'm still working on the first block first repeat of the pattern hi you're so awesome marjorie yes i love you i love you uh but yeah it's uh it looks so neat and i just love going in and picking out the colors it's uh it's random in an organized way where you have all the 
warm colors and then the cool colors, but it's still random inside the cool colors and inside the warm colors. So yeah, this is uh, really fun. And I will link this pattern down below as well. Uh, this one, if I remember correctly, is free. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So I haven't quite finished this whole block yet. I did crochet up a square a couple days ago that I need to attach. But um, yeah, you, you crochet the square so that the color is only half of the square. And so you do a, a, the color change and you do the rows back and forth. Instead of in rounds, you, you crochet and then you crochet back and then turn around and and then uh, and then you leave the ends long so that you can uh, use it to sew the squares together. And sewing crochet and knitted things together is not my favorite. <clears throat> and it's not my favorite because I haven't had much practice and so it doesn't look super polished and so that's one thing I'm hoping to get out of this is practice with sewing knit and crochet pieces together so that it looks nice it doesn't look overworked and scrunched up um, I find that I uh, I pull really tight when I'm sewing them together because I like want to make sure they're secure and then it bunches up the fabric and it it detracts from the quality instead of adds to it. And so that is one thing I just need to practice. I'm, I just haven't done it very much. So I will get lots of practice with this blanket. <laughs> but yeah, this has been, this has been a nice little piece to work on, uh, especially since this is what I work on. And then I later sew it to the whole thing. So I don't have a big blanket sitting on my lap all the time. Uh, which is a nice option. Oh, and I should say, I am using all acrylic worsted weight yarn for this of various brands. Uh, Red Heart, Big Twist, Bernat, Karen. Can't think of anything else. But <laughs> I'm sure there's another one in there. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And recently, I have been knitting on a pair of socks, and I'm working on these two at a time. And this is another pattern that I'm working on. I thought it would be nice to have some, some socks with a little bit of lace in them and play off of the lace going down either side of the leg. And so I'm knitting these two at a time, which is not my usual, but I am, it was just the perfect combination with this pattern being so straightforward. The not knowing what the stripes would look like for this yarn has been pushing me along and you know, not having to really keep track of how many repeats did I do on the first sock so I can make sure to to copy it on the second sock. That has been, that's really cool. So yeah, I'm really loving it. This yarn is by Lion Brand. I picked this up at Joann's and this is the Manny Petty sock yarn. Um, I forget the name of this colorway, but I have the tag sitting over there on the end table. Ugh. Here we go. So I can show you Manny Petty. And this color is knee. Okay, me. I don't think I even looked at the color names when I bought them. <laughs> I just put all the colors in the cart. Uh, yeah, so 
I just cast them on from the balls and didn't really pay attention to where the stripes were to start or anything like that. And as you can probably tell, the stripe sequence is just a little bit off. So it's orange here and then orange there. And orange and red, orange and red. Red, red. So it's just, and you can especially tell with the gray. Here's pink and gray stripes. And now I'm finally in the pink and gray stripes up here and it's just a little bit off, which irks me a little bit, but it is what it is. And I'm pushing through and the colors are super fun. But uh, yeah, so this is my, I'm supposed to do uh, either one project that uses two full skeins or two separate projects that uses up two full skeins. But for a summer stash camp, uh, for the month of July, we're trying to use two full skeins. And uh, she did say a skein is a skein, like you buy at the store, right? So I'm using two 50 gram balls uh, to knit two socks. So I am making these tall, proper, a proper tall sock. And I used a heel flap and gusset. I love a short row heel, but um, I actually like the way a heel flap and gusset fits. So that might be my new my new heel of choice. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just plugging away on these. They've been really nice in the car, really nice uh, watching TV. Excuse me. And so yeah, it's going to be a, a really easy pattern once it gets once it gets released. So very excited about that. And as I hinted, I did buy quite a lot of this yarn. I guess not quite a lot, but I bought these two balls of Manny Petty. And then I also bought these two. These are the same color. This is Mittens. I did look up these, I did look for images of what these stripes would look like on the internet. Because when I'm shopping on Joann's, it, they just show you a picture of the ball of yarn. They don't show you what the stripe sequence is going to look like. So I like these. And then I also got uh, this one. This is yoga. And I really love, I love yellow and blue together, but it also has that little bit of pink. And then does it go to yellow, blue, pink? Looks like it has some gray. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm curious because, especially since, um, with these socks, it's, it's still not repeating itself. Like this is, this is all still just new and I'm more than halfway through the ball. So, um, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. I like it. It's something different and they're actually, uh, quite affordable. These balls of sock yarn and I am not afraid to admit that I knit on a budget and finding affordable options that are still really um, striking and attractive and appealing is, it can be challenging to do on a budget. So uh, all of the beautiful indie dyed yarn on Instagram is super enticing and at the same time we're saving up to buy a house. So. <laughs> I can't go buy all the things like I want to, uh, and for a good reason. Um, yeah, so that's what I have been knitting on lately. It has been busy around here these past couple of weeks. Uh, school is out of session for the summer, so we did... Um, our niece flew in from Texas. 
We picked her up from the airport here in Seattle. We drove her down to California so she could spend her vacation with her grandmother, my mother-in-law. And then uh, we picked both of them up and drove back up here and on the way went on a little camping trip, which was amazing. It was so good to get out of the house and just unplug from the internet and just take a couple days off of looking at emails and having video chats. And it was super relaxing and wonderful. Uh, and then, um, and then my mother-in-law stayed up here for a couple more weeks and we got to hang out and go look at things around here in the area. And we checked out, so we checked out a couple of our local, the parks in the area, the state parks, and we were able to take the dogs out and, and have some fun. Uh, we went out to Mount Rainier National Park and that was so pretty. <laughs> great um and just we got to spend time we played Catan the board game and watched a lot of uh Schitt's Creek on Netflix which is a great show we, we've almost watched um the whole show all six seasons we didn't quite finish it but almost there <laughs> and uh yeah so that was fun and uh now she's back home and we're, Michael and I are both teaching over this summer. Um, it's just been a lot of, a lot of computer time. Teaching from home, having uh, either recording myself to make a tutorial video or having a live meeting session over the computer. Um, but it's just been a lot of computer time and I'm not used to that much computer time. So my eyes just kind of get glossed over at the end of the day, just staring at screens all of the time and it, um, has become a bit overwhelming. So that was part of the reason that I just needed to take a break from recording, um, because if I'm recording all day long for work, then I don't really have the energy or stamina to record more in my free time. So uh, I think I've been able to strike a good balance. And one of the things that's helping, helping me is my garden out in the yard. So it gets me out of the house, away from my phone, my computer, and the television, all of those screens. Um, it gets me outside looking at the plants and what's going on with them. And it has been so great. I've always wanted to have a garden and I'm able to actually do that while we're here and renting. And it's something I want to continue when we buy our house. And it's been really fun to just play around in the garden trying out new plants I haven't tried growing before, trying to grow plants I have grown before, <laughs> uh, and to just play around with that. So that has been an awesome experience, and it gets me outside and away from the computer, like I've already said. <laughs> so let me put in here, let me give you a little tour of the garden and where it's at today. So a little update on the garden. So it's Saturday, July 11th, 2020. And I did purchase a jalapeno plant from Walmart. And it does have uh, a flower. Oops. Um, and a couple more buds starting. So I'm really excited about that. <clears throat> my first attempt at bell peppers failed, and then my second attempt failed, so I'm trying them again. <laughs> so I just put some seeds in here today of um, some bell peppers. So we'll see if I get anything out of there. Third time's a charm, right? 
Um, over here we've got onions. So I just had bought green onions from the store because uh, I was using them in a recipe. And then I just went ahead and planted them out here. They were cut off uh, just like these were. Um, actually, the first ones were cut off even lower, to be honest. Uh, these I cut not to be so aggressive, uh, hoping that um, growing them out here, they'll, they'll still pick up and do that. So I've got some green onions, and I'm curious if I can get good size onions out of the bottom, or if I'll just be harvesting the greens off the top. I don't know. This is an experiment. My garden is an experiment, and I love that. I, uh, have a cucumber plant that came up. This is my baby, baby cucumber plant. And then over here are my tomato plants. There's one that's further along than the other one, even though they were planted at the same time. And I think it's because this one is getting more sun than this one. I don't know. Uh, the third seed was over here and it didn't produce, so I just put a new seed in today and we'll see what happens with that. Uh, thankfully, my lettuce is kind of hanging on over here despite the warm temperatures. <clears throat> this is where the strawberries were, uh, but I took them all out, trimmed them back, and moved the mother plants over here into a different bed. Um, I think they've been over here too long. They didn't really give a lot of fruit. And I put in a pumpkin seed right here. And these are my two zucchini plants. And I've got uh, male flowers right now. And I think I see the start. See down here? I have the start of a female flower. Oh my gosh. I think a couple of them down there. Ooh, yeah. So once the female flowers bloom and we can get that pollen transferred from the male flower to the female flower, then we're going to see some zucchinis growing. I'm really excited. And I put a couple more zucchini seeds in today as well. And next to the zucchini are carrots. And they're doing pretty well. Um, I have them kind of spaced out. And I don't think I needed to space them out that much. So I did put a few more seeds in on July 4th, and, <clears throat> excuse me, they're starting to sprout. See them right here? Oh yeah, little baby carrots. And yeah, the strawberries, strawberries are here now. This bed was full of garlic. I harvested the garlic. So I moved the strawberries over here. I added compost into the soil move the strawberries and these are the potatoes that I had planted way back when and um, <clears throat> this plant is coming from a potato where the eyes were definitely growing before I put it in the ground this came from the other half of that potato none of the eyes were growing <clears throat> but I didn't want to waste it so I just threw it in the ground and thought maybe hopefully something will come of it and it's starting to grow another potato plant. Um, another one of our potatoes started growing, so I cut it into three pieces, and they're over here. Uh, they probably won't come up for a while. It took these a while to poke through the ground, so we shall see. Uh, but yeah, that's the, that's the tour of the garden. Um, I'm really excited. <sighs> yeah, so I have quite a few things growing out there considering the small space that I have and it's just my little getaway it's super nice I did um, harvest my garlic and I think I'll make a separate video I did record myself while harvesting garlic it's kind of a big deal I'm really you I've put so much time into the garden um, watering it and checking on it pretty much every day Marjorie and I've made a routine of every morning we go out and we check on the garden and we see what's going on and um, so being able to finally pull up my first 
crop from the garden, it was, uh, it was kind of a big deal. And so, yes, I recorded myself <laughs> harvesting garlic. So I think I'll make a separate video to post on the channel here with that. So I will have some gardening content to go with the knitting and spinning and crocheting. And that's exciting. So thanks for joining me today and my little, my little knitting update for you and what's been going on. And I look forward to seeing you next time. So until then, happy crafting, whatever your craft may be. Stay safe and I will see you next time. Bye.